So this video is sponsored by Pionex, one of the exchanges I use all the time. It's one of the main crypto brokers to Binance, so the volume is very high. The main thing that sets them apart though is that you can use free trading bots, a variety all designed to benefit from different market behaviours, whether that's up, down or sideways. You'll get 20% off all your trading fees for life with my link in the description. And if you join the Telegram, a lot of us already use it, so if you've got questions, we can try and help you out. Hello everybody, welcome back. Let's have a look at uh, all these charts. Bit of a late start this morning. Um, my older one with chicken pox is, is better. She's back at school, but my younger one has got conjunctivitis now. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Social services are going to come around to ours soon because my kids always sound like they've got something wrong with them. But I'm pretty sure it's normal. All the other kids around my area are the same. Right, so let's have a look. This is the euro, uh, more or less unchanged on the day so far. Uh, on the dailies, being supported above all major moving averages, including the uh, the, the, the 10 and the, and the 7. So basically all major moving averages. Working on that V-shaped recovery still, in all fairness. A sharp projection from this level. So let's take it down to the 4 hour to see if there's any clues as to what's going on in the shorter term time frames. Still nothing other than that pour, uh, that pouring red rain of rejection from that level. So the 50 exponential holding it so far, 200 exponential being um, 106.9, we can call it 107. Closures below there will probably see a failure of the uh, of this of, of this, and, and probably go back down to its lower portion of the range and maybe even lower. You know, the ECB and the Bank of England, not the Bank of England, and the Fed. I'm battling it out to say who's going to have the uptrend on this chart at the moment. ECB adamant that they're going to keep doing 50 basis points regardless of what their their, their banks are, are doing, which they're not doing very well. So today it's it's basically uh, place your bets which bank's going to have a problem next. Uh, European banks, they apparently are strong according to the ECB. Not very not very wise to uh, to basically just carry on as, as normal, I would say. Even the Fed know that. But uh, but yeah, we'll see where they go. But again, if they if they pivot, if the ECB pivot, they've lost all credibility. And I think that's what they're more, most afraid of. But they haven't really got much credibility as far as I'm concerned anyway. No central banks do. The Fed's slightly better than the others, in all fairness. But uh, but ECB, Bank of England, not really... Uh, not really a big fan of that, to be fair. And um, this is um, uh, uh, S&P futures, uh, and again, so far unchanged on the day. Uh, getting a rejection here on the daily, 200 exponential death cross retest. It could be considered as uh, four hourly though. Still in this rising channel and above all major moving averages. So again, this is probably why we're sitting around here being unchanged. We've got supports, uh, we've got resistances. Uh, we're basically in a rising channel, which unfortunately does have a habit of breaking down. But for the moment, we should expect to move up to the top, uh, 4,500, no, 4,050, basically. Uh, hidden bullish divergence on the way up as well. So not not massively afraid of that. Bitcoin dominant. Uh, I'm not with it myself today either. And um, the total market cap excluding just Bitcoin. So this includes Ethereum. Again, another chart that's above all major moving averages. So it's not bearish. It's not massively bullish, but it's not bearish. Fresh Golden Cross sitting down here at the $564 billion mark, looking for a retest at some point for what we all would like to see as a recovery from that point, a bullish retest. Again, that, that, is, a, that is still a fair bit away from where we're at right now. Doesn't mean that it has to happen immediately. These things can take time. So we could, we could trend up from here, or we could move down to the tune of 4%. Moves down 4%. I'd say it's a reasonable time to think about picking up altcoins just generally based on their USDT pairs. That's a reasonable expectation to see a, uh, a retest of that and then a bounce. What we got over here, nothing with the itchy cloud, so that's that. And the Bitcoin dominance chart coming up to uh, to where the first initial rejection was the other day. So my entry point here, 10%, a further entry point here at 10%. I'll go for another entry point at 10% up here and uh, and so on and so on as we move up. So we'll see where we go with all of that. But again, for the moment, the, the alt season is still pending, uh, potentially not going to happen, but we'll, we'll we'll wait and see. The last time I called an alt season and bought alts back in the bear market, um, it did take a it did take a couple of weeks for it to really pick up momentum, and within a four to six week period of two hundred percent gain. But you know, no one has a crystal ball. It is about risk to reward, and um, there's no reward without risk. So you got you got to you got to stick your neck out. I know um, I know that uh, the uh, the comments obviously you know people who do comments are. Perfect traders, obviously. Uh, they told me in the comments. But um, right, let's have a look. 
uh, I'll make Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's still meandering above all major moving averages. And I say meandering, it's kind of got a bit of a rounded top to it here. So it doesn't look particularly good as far as candle body formation is concerned, I have to say. Still with a re relatively high month flow index read on the daily too. So uh, this does does beg the question, do we have a deeper pullback into the $25,000 zone at this point, really? It, it, it does make me feel as though that's not unlikely. I know we're up half a percent at the moment. It's nothing really. Um, so yesterday I was talking about how it's going to be sideways Sunday. It is sideways Sunday still uh, moving into Monday. As you can see with traditional markets, Forex indices, the lot, they're all sideways today at the moment so far. So looking for some kind of, um, I, think it, I, th I think the fear of yeah, more banks failing is probably what's causing the indecision on uh, on markets. Looking at here on the four hourly though, still above all major moving averages. So with the daily and the four hourly, the, the, it does have it still does actually have the um, the ability to to resolve to the upside and actually move up beyond our previous high. Breaking above twenty eight thousand, I would say we'll go straight up to thirty thousand without too much of a problem. Um, and then probably to 32 or so. Now, we're getting closer to the end of the month, obviously. Uh, so we're going to have a quick look at the monthly. There is a target on the monthly being your Bollinger Band Centre, which is sitting up here at 33,260. Um, at the moment, we're getting a rejection, or we're hovering around the uh, 21 exponential moving average, which I like to call that as the Bollinger Band Shadow. So we've got, a, you know, we're, we're more or less at the centre of the range. So we could get a, a, a sharp rejection from here on that monthly. That is true. Uh, but if we don't, we move up to a standard moving average being the 20 Bollinger Band Center, basically. If we have a look at the momentum, we've been curling up on the histogram for months now. Same thing with the RSI and Money Flow Index, just exactly as you'd expect with the savage uptrends. Uh, the weekly is, uh, now we've diverged above with the MACD, above the zero point, so giving it more ability to move up. So conflicting information here. If I was just based on, uh, if I was basing this chart on its chart on its own, I would say that there's more likely of it, more likelihood of it going up. It's just because we're so tied into all the other markets. This is why we have to look at all these other markets first. I talk about the domino effect of other markets. There, you know, there's skepticism about how this would resolve. But the weekly looks good. The four hourly and the daily, more or less, even with a subtle possibility of further upside. So there's about 65% more likelihood of moving to the up. Um, and the weekly is still you know, pretty, pretty, pretty steep um, um, momentum still for further upside. So, if I had to put it in summary, I would say that actually, you know, Bitcoin does look good still on four hourly, daily, weekly, and uh, not so much the monthly. Uh, but we could be moving into a, a pretty significant month if we could just close above into the twenty-eight thousand dollar zones, and uh, then a move up to maybe, maybe as much as thirty-three thousand would uh, would would be imminent really same idea as closing above this weekly uh 200 simple moving average you know as we did the other uh, the couple of weeks ago you know now now that we're above there look for a retest of there which is down at the twenty five thousand seven hundred dollar zone any res uh, supports above this level is worth buying that dip because on a long-term basis you know you look for closures above a 200 uh, simple moving average for a long-term continuation up so this is this is like investment stuff, really, rather than trade. We're looking at the weekly, all right, Captain Noob Master. So get yourself back to bed. It's not going to happen straight away, but this is what it would mean. You know, this it's, it's a general rule. You're above a 200 simple. You're below a 200 simple. You know, what's the likelihood of continuation in either direction? Well, you you do have to be concerned when being below a 200 simple. You you are less concerned and actually think about it as a as a very good entry point for a long term position when you're above a 200 exponential, especially if you just closed it and retested it and got a decent support on it. So investment at the ready does look pretty good. Doesn't mean you get rich quick, but you should make some money over a period of years if you buy close to that once above it. Right, I'm just going to leave with you there. It's Monday, it's boring. I'll see if I can get a chance to make another video later. I might not. It's a bit busy, obviously, today with um, you know kids and, and, and just general bits and bobs, but I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can muster up for you if there is anything to say at all, to be honest with you, because we might see American markets open and it just being absolutely rubbish. We might see a bank fail over in Europe and I might and it might shift the entire market to the downside or the upside. Who the hell even knows these days? But we'll we'll see. We'll see. But if I don't get a video out today, it's either that I'm busy or there's basically nothing left to say. Anyway, I'll leave with you there. Thank you for watching guys. Hope you have a nice day. Take it easy.